Hey, welcome back to our tutorial series. Today we will be looking at how to save the game using the Rizzle system. And I will briefly talk about the security issue that many people are addressing on YouTube. So let's start by creating a save system, right? Maybe we can create a save script within our data folder and this will be a script we will call whenever we need to save something, right? So let's remove everything and create a class save system. Maybe we can rename it save system then save system. All right, so create this case. So this will be a static class with static variables and functions, which will be basically saving the game and loading the game, All right? So we will need two function, save data, which is gonna be a void, and load data which is also going to be a void function. We can always flesh things out by adding error and links, that kind of things. But at the moment, I want to keep this simple. So in order to save data, we need to know what we want to save. It is actually quite fortunate because we actually already in the design of the game organize everything we want to save in the data object. All right. And the data object is located in our game node in here. All right. So what we want to do is to save data. And in order to save data, we will use a static method, which is result saver min. The, the method is save from the object result saver. So here we see that we need a resource to save as well as a path to save things at. So the resource we want to save is game.ref.data. Right? As for the path, we have to create one. So let's create a constant, which is going to be, I, there's no need for var, I think, but we need to declare it like var. I want it to be a string, and I want it to be user colon double slash. So this means I want to save this save in a local directory that the game will create on the user's device, right? So this is where we want to save it and we will just rename it save.tres. The extension is basically res for resource with an extra t at the beginning to mention that it is a text readable version of file opposed to just t res which wouldn't be readable. I've never tried but it's what it's meant to do. So here they are. I think we don't need to declare a constant to static. What is Godot saying about it? Yep. So constant don't need to be declared static. All right. Those two functions, though, we want them to be static because we want to be able to access these functions without having to instance an instance of save system, right? 
since there is no property, there's no reason to create an instance for it, right? So here, let's add the path to our save method, save call. If you're wondering why path is full uppercase, it's just a go dot way of making things. Constants are declared with full uppercase, so you know that whatever this is you call here, it is a constant. All right. So this is how it's saved. Now, how do you load? Well, you use a load function with the path of the resource. This is how you, re you load a resource, okay? So here, this function returns a resource object, which we need to grab, right? So what we can do is get game ref data and assign the loaded object to it to update our game ref data to the loaded object. All right. This is the smallest, most minimized way of doing it. It's very vulnerable, very weak. When we load data, we don't check anything. We just override the data object. One simple thing we can do is check that there is a file to load. So we can use resource loader and then exists to check that there is a file, a resource file to load at this location. If there is a file, then we want to load, all right? I also want you to add another constant, which is should load as a Boolean initialized to true. The reason why I want you to have this variable here is because this loading system here doesn't support loading a file on a data object which has different properties. To make things clearer, let's say that right now we have this data object. We save it and the load file has, let's say 15 Stardust and the upgrades level two, right? But then we create a new variable, which is gonna be uh, spent Stardust, right? And these variables contains all the Stardust the player has spent since the start of the game, right? If I load the data, which is just this, because we haven't saved the game with any value in spent Stardust yet, I'm gonna load this and override the object ending up like this. Right, so the new variable will disappear. When we are making the game, adding new features, testing stuff, etc., we will create a lot of variables often, change things. So this will happen a lot. So what we usually do, I mean, what I usually do when I'm testing is I just erase the load, I mean, the save file. So I don't load the data and create a brand new file. Right. When you are having a functional game and you actually make an update, creating new variables to the save file, what you want to do is to have basically a handler that will grab the loaded data and make sure to add any new thing to it. All right. And then Overwrite. I mean, there's different approaches you can go with, but at the moment, at this stage of development, I just simply get rid of the data altogether. All right. So that is our data file empty. All right. So we need to make a check here. 
if not should load, I just return. Right. Let's have just a bit of documentation. So loads the data and overrides. I don't know how many R's are in overrides. Um, game dot ref dot data object. Okay. Here we will save game dot ref dot data object in a save file. Save dot to ref. Save to not stream. And we're not gonna say where it is. Here is the path of the file we want to save and load. And here is whether or not we should load the game. Right? And this will be save manager. Okay. So we have the functions, we have the methods. How to use them now? This will all happen here in our game script. We want to load the data right there. And we want to save the data every now and then. So when do we save? The easiest way is to use a timer. So maybe we can create it right away. Let's add a timer node right there. Rename it save timer. Let's initialize it. Auto start, yes, definitely. One shot, absolutely not. And wait time, maybe we can go with five. Every five seconds, the game will save. There's no universal rule what to choose here, but yeah. So we have the save timer, all right? And now we just have to get the signal and create a new method here. All right, so save system dot save data, and that's it. Triggered when the save timer completes the loop. Save the game. All right. Here, we create a new data object, and then we load data. Save system dot load data. All right. Now we just have to start the game. Go in the generator. Wait for it to generate five or more. Right. We the game saves every five seconds, I think. Right. So let's just wait a little bit. And now we can close the game, start the game again, and we actually have 17 Stardust, all right? Now we can buy clicker upgrades. Let's buy two, wait a little bit to make sure that the save is going through. I think it should be enough, all right? We can start the game again. We have five Stardust, and we have two levels in Clicker Upgrade, which allow us to get eight, 11 Stardust. This is how you make a save system, the simplest way, all right? By creating a resource, you want to save in a file and load from the file, all right? So on YouTube, there's quite a bit of discussion about whether this is safe or not. And the answer is, it is not. Because since it is a resource, you can actually add methods within it. And by having the possibility to add methods, you can take any text editor or code editor, add methods to the game, and well, first of all, cheat in the game, and second of all, 
you can pretty much hack the computer, right? By reaching files outside of the game. There are two things to think about when making a decision to use the resource loader. The first one is that you can always check the file before loading it to make sure that it is safe, right? So you can either make your own file check, right? Or you can go in the Godot as asset library and search for safe to find this one, Godot safe resource loader. This plugin will actually give you access to a new load function, which will be safe load. And safe, safe load will actually check the load file before running it. And if for some reasons the file is considered malicious, then it won't load it and won't be run through. So there, this is a great layer of protection already. Right. Another thing to think about is that absolute safety doesn't exist, right? So you can always say, well, JSON, JSON is safe, etc., etc. Yeah, sure, but absolute safety doesn't exist. And you have to measure uh, based on your product, what is the amount of security which is needed, right? If your game is meant to share saves, then maybe it is indeed worth thinking about the safety of the saves. If your game isn't meant to share the saves and sharing saves is considered either, I don't know, cheating or that kind of thing, which is often the case in an idle game, then we can say that it's up to the player to choose to go pick up a random save file from an unknown source and add it to its game, to his game. It's important to know that we can't prevent and ensure the entire safety of the player. There are things we can do and there are things we can't do. If the player is choosing to make I mean, to take actions which are actually making them or their system vulnerable, then it's on them, right? The game isn't meant to share saves. That's it. You might as well give warnings when the game starts. You know, players often sign things, even though they do not read it, you can have a sort of warning, like, saves aren't meant to be shared. So running a save that comes from an unknown source could cause problem and hack your device. But as long as you do use the game save system and don't touch to the files, you'll be perfectly fine, which is the case, right? So that's pretty much all I have to say about this. Um, Godot comes with a wonderful way to save files and resources. And I think it's actually a little bit sad to just throw it out of the window just because it is not safe, especially when there are tools like Godot Safe Resource Loader to actually make it safer. So that's it for today. This video, which is more about talking than actually coding, but anyway, I hope you liked it and have a nice day.